All right, well, uh, so what we got to work on right now is, is this is a Schuler MS750. Uh, this is a feed wagon. Um, typically these haul around 10 to 15,000 pounds of feed. This has got about uh, 4,680 pounds of feed in it. And uh, what happened is uh, your feed goes in the, in the bin then it runs through a series of augers and conveyor belts and it dumps it out in the bunks and uh, that's all run by this hydraulic motor and that coupling down in here is uh, broke. This belongs to one of the local dairy farmers. Um, they had just got far enough in their feed program this evening to where they could finish it up with their with their skid steers uh, but this needs to be ready to rock and roll at four o'clock this morning um, so we better we better get after it okay so i got the i've got the pump off uh, the feed wagon um, i need to get some measurements off this shaft uh, they look like everything's a quarter inch key but one one is a square key, one's a woodruff, so we're going to get some dimensions off that. I know I'm going to have to cut that down uh, thickness-wise because I don't have any quarter-inch uh, keys. And so we can you can do this with, you know, if you have a good selection of end mills, uh, you can do that with an end mill. And, or a gauge pen would be a good way to do it. Uh, but we are uh, 240 thousandths. Uh, that's a diameter. And then the overall length of our Woodruff key is probably going to be about an inch. Yeah, nine, 913 thousandths. So I'm going to draw up a little drawing. Just very basic sketch. Uh, nine. 13 by point two three nine five you want to build in some tolerance here so if you're like this is 240 thousandths um, we want about 239 and a half thousandths to be able to have have a good uh, kind of slip slash uh, press fit doesn't it needs to be what I would describe as a, a loose press fit uh, shaft diameter is 0 0.9990, so one inch. And so if we do some rough calculations, we need uh, one inch. So we're going to need, uh, so, and that is, so from here, with the shaft diameter, we know what our key dimension is, is a quarter inch uh, straight key. We can pretty much figure uh, we have a, a we're going to need about an inch and a half uh, overall diameter coupling and so what I'm going to do is we're going to go head over to the bandsaw and, and we'll uh, I've got some 4140 that we can make this out of it's a good tough steel uh, for this but not so so tough it's going to break it has some some uh, uh, softness to it because um, that, that's the purpose of these couplers is, is these couplers and keyways are designed to break before you tear up major components. Uh, so we're going to go over to the bandsaw, we'll get that cutting. Uh, then we'll, at the same time, we'll get over to the mill, start bringing our, our woodruff key down to dimension, and um, we'll just get, get rolling. And uh, so while that's getting cut off, we're going to be over here at the mill. And what I'm going to do is, is touch off on our keyway. Uh, I've got this set up on a pin on one side, sitting up against the jaw, sitting flat on the parallel on the other side. We'll dress our top surface, turn it around and bring it down uh, to final dimension. And uh, by then that part should be, our, our 4140 should be uh, ready to start work in the lathe. Uh, one measurement that uh, 
I failed to mention is we need about two and a half inches uh, total uh, finished length. So uh, let's get some cutting oil on this and we'll get after it. So it's not quite fully flat, so we're going to go ahead and take another thou or two. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a file and get it deburred. And we'll uh, get it turned over. and get it squared up. So with our uh, second side squared off, we can go ahead and, and uh, get that deburred, deburred, get a dimension. And then we can take it down to final thickness. You probably probably won't be able to see it, but I have a little line right there scribed in to our final dimension, which is our key width is 240. We're going to go 239 and a half. One thing, one thing I'll say is when you when you need uh, flatness, you want to make sure that your your part everything your jaws and vise is clean every after every time you remove and reinsert your part because uh, the chip can really screw you up so make sure everything's good and clean and, and chip free and uh, use a dead blow hammer to seat this against your parallels not a rubber mallet rubber mallets bounce and that will actually lift a corner or or an edge off the parallel bars a dead blow will actually kind of stay it'll strike the part and just kind of hold it there um, and that's what you want you want it to be flat against your parallels So 239 and a half is, is a little bit tight. I would have to beat that in there with a hammer. We don't really want that. These are designed to come apart. So we're going to go ahead and take about another half a thou off.
<clears throat> so here's our shaft. Here's our key fits down in there nice, nice, very well. Um, we'll go ahead and clean that out before we finalize everything. I hear that the bandsaw is done, so we'll head over to the closing and uh, start working on our on our shaft. Okay, so we're over at the closing. Uh, I'm probably gonna uh, work this at about 570 RPMs. Um, first thing we're gonna do is is we'll get our facing operation done that's the first thing you should do on every part uh, sometimes I get a little ahead of myself and forget that it's, it's really no excuse um, and then because we're going to have a lot of stick out what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and bore this for our internal dimension then we can support it and and turn it turn our part down to its final dimension um, so here we go Uh, first pass was a skim cut. Uh, it was about 20 thousandths. Uh, it's been my experience, interrupted cuts are a little bit more torturous on your tooling. That's a good clean cut so we can get this ready for our drilling operation. I always like to put a little bit of tension on my um, on my on my spindle or tailstock ram whatever you want to call it uh, I don't want to lock it down but just a little bit I think it just helps you feel what everything's um, what everything's doing through the tailstock really a much better way uh, to do this is to uh, get rid of the compound uh, and just set this up as a solid piece and you can drill right off the right off the claw uh, right off the, your uh, apron or right off your your cross slide um, I don't have a DRO yet on this machine so that's not real practical at this time but when I do get when I do get that far that's that's probably going to happen that's a hell of a that's a very good way and a very rigid way uh, to, to drill and bore um, you know, you look at CNC machines, uh, they have tail stocks and they don't use them. Everything's done on the cross slide. So uh, just food, food for thought. We'll, we'll probably go over that at some point, but uh, let's get this whole board. One thing I like to do when I start this is I'll kind of bump. When you, when you bump, you tend to get a lot less uh, deflection. Your spotting drills, center drills, uh, drill bits in general tend to just, at least for me, tend to start a heck of a lot more square. Love having that handbrake right there. So we're going to go a little bit undersized in our drilling operation, and uh, we'll we'll bore it out to final dimension. So we're going to go with the, we're going to do this in about three steps. We're going to start with 11 sixteenths, and then uh, 61 64 and then our 15 sixteenths and then we'll bore it to our final dimension honestly I could probably do this in two um, but that's all right If 
you start getting long stringy chips, just back off and then bump it and you'll break that chip. You don't want long stringy chips when you're boring or drilling. Um, that, that can be dangerous. They get wrapped around the machine and wrapped around you and you can uh, certainly lose a finger. y'all are rocking and rolling a little bit, it's because you're actually riding on the lathe. Um, you guys are sitting right up against the, you're sitting right in the chip pan, just up, up a little higher. our next size up. And this should go pretty quick. Um, it's probably going to growl a little bit. That's just the nature of these big, big bits. Uh, but it, it should punch that hole pretty, pretty quick because it's Uh, last dimension is the 15 sixteenths. Now, if you had a one inch reamer, this would be a good. This would be a good candidate, a good candidate uh, for that. You don't need it to be super, super, super precise. Um, we're going to go ahead and bore it. Uh, so we're all set up for boring. Um, one thing we're going to want to let that do is we, we drilled that out pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and clean off all my chips, get everything zeroed, and kind of let that part cool down a little bit uh, because it's going to change. The dimensions are going to change. You know, when you do things, when you do things hot and fast, or fast, uh, things are going to heat up, and that metal is going to expand, and you may have everything right on the money, but then when it cools down, nothing, nothing's going to fit, and and uh, that's why. So what we're going to do is we'll take a real light pass and then um, then we'll check what our readings are with our um, with our cylinder gauges. And you got to remember when you're boring you're pulling everything out so everything's going to work in reverse. So this is just a five thousandths uh, clean up pass which I may go ahead and increase the feed rate a little bit. I don't like to bore very quick uh, even with a rigid setup. Well, not that this setup is rigid, but this is a good heavy boring bar. Um, you still, you'd be surprised at how flexible steel is, and you'll get you'll get uh, quite a bit of deflection in this operation. So I just I'd rather work just a little bit slower. go ahead and get a measurement and we are 946 and a half so we are 946 and a half 
well, we need to get to an inch, so that's about 53 and a half thousandths uh, that we need to go. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up just a little bit. We need to 53 and a half by two. We got about 26 and a half thou, 20 right in there. So uh, this is 20 thousandths right now, and then we'll check after this pass. You can hear how much nicer that's cutting. So, funny story. Uh, my my compressor went down today. It's got a little pinhole in the bottom of the tank. It's a very, very old compressor. I've had that since the 80s. And uh, anyway, that's what I was supposed to be fixing this evening, but this pays and I can live without it for a night. So we are at 972, so it looks like I got about 14 thousandths left to take. And uh, we'll do that in a pass and, and we'll be done. like a real nice finish in there. I'll chamfer the edges in a minute. Get our snap gauge in there. We call these cylinder gauges. We're working on engines and things like that. But technically it's a snap gauge. And that is one inch right on the money. We'll go ahead and get that edge chamfered. got our piece uh, supported. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set my travidial and mark just a little reference line in our part. What we're going to do is we're just going to get it concentric. This is an inch and uh, basically three quarters. It's one seven five two five. So we're just going to get the metal uh, round, you know, just a nice finish here, and then we're going to see if it'll fit. I would rather have this a little on the heavier side because we do have to cut a keyway in this and not have it be uh, thick enough. Um, so let's let's give this a whirl. You guys are bouncing around a little bit. I apologize. You guys are sitting on the on the uh, 
basically on the chip guard. It's a little flimsy. A beautiful finish um, so a little bit about this setup this this is a, a center on a center in the Pratt and Bernard uh, true set chuck and this can work very well um, what you if you need really super precise what you could do is just put an indicator uh, here and just tap it until it starts running true uh, just in case anybody has never seen that setup before or anything like that if you don't have a bull nose that's a good alternative you just have an oversized center and uh, you can do those things um, and like I said if you need it to be really precise you just spin it and tap it around because it's going to pivot right here and you'll just tap 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 until you can get it you know right where you want it it's it's not a very difficult operation. nice finish. just want to give that a deeper um, so we can go ahead and flip this around get it parted and then uh, faced off to our correct dimension and uh, we'll be ready to check the, the fit on our shaft as well as, uh, and then from there we can go ahead and cut that keyway. Go ahead and get our part faced off. And we'll chamfer that inside edge. Side edge. And then we can head over to the bench and see how it fits on our shaft. Okay, so we're over at the bench. We'll get our part cleaned up. Get all the chips out of it. I think you can see that's a pretty nice finish on that. So we'll go ahead and check the fit. That's good. Check both ends. That feels real nice. No difference in fit. That's a real nice slip fit. So I'm going to go ahead and check it on the feeder wagon. I know you guys can't see this, but 
That fits real good, both sides. All right, so we're back at the lathe. Um, everything fit on all our shafts real good. Everything fit on our shafts real good. So what we need to do is we need to uh, cut that keyway. Now, if you're unfamiliar on how to do this without a shaper or a uh, keyway cutter uh, for your arbor press, you can do it in the lathe. I'm not going to go through the whole process uh, because I covered this in my pulley video, so check that out. Um, this is the same process. This is a little more difficult because this is not cast, so we can't take the big heavy cuts. Uh, that we did with the cast. This is going to be pretty much one, one or two thousandths at a time and, and probably have to stop here and there to, to sharpen the tool. Um, one thing you can do if you have an end mill and a mill that's long enough is you can go in and mill the bulk of that out uh, with an end mill. Just plunge cut it and then square it off with uh, the high-speed steel cutter uh, this way. Um, so without further ado, uh, hopefully we can get right through this pretty quick. We got quite a quite a ways to go. Um, couple thousandths at a time. Um, I guess you could probably try to do this with power feed. I wouldn't recommend it because if you get a bind or too big of a cut, you're going to shatter that high speed steel. So, you know, the best thing to do if you're going to do a lot of this is just get the proper equipment. I just haven't had time to and I'm probably not going to video this whole thing. Um, so just, if you're unsure of what I'm doing, just go back and check out that pulley video. I'll put a link down in the description um, and you can go check that out. So now you can see our keyway is cut. Uh, it took a took quite a while. Had to turn it around. Um, this this cut all, but um, you can't have a lot of stick out on this because that tool will flex. Um, so it it cut all but the last quarter of an inch. We had to flip everything around and get the other end cut. Uh, so anyway, let's head over to the bench and, and see how uh, see how we did. Okay, so we're back at the bench, and you can see our part with the keyway cut. I've got some swarf in there, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get this deburred with a with a file. And we can get that cleaned out. We can install our key on a hydraulic pump. Oh, that's going to be a nice fit. Oh yeah, one little burr in there. Make sure it works on both ends. That's the end we're going to want on the shaft side of life. Uh, so that's real good. We have our uh, keyway for the conveyor belt on, the, or the conveyor on the feed wagon. Uh, so let's head out there and see if we can get this put together in the middle of the night. All right. So we got our coupling. Uh, 
our keyway cut. Now we're just going to, what I like to do is just mill a little flat spot where the set screws are going to go. And we'll get those drilled out, tapped, and we'll get this put together. head over to the uh, feed wagon and get this put back together. So the first thing we want to do is kind of make sure our keyways are a little bit lined up, uh, at least enough so when I can get it on the shaft I can start the bolts and, and um, spin this around. Uh, hopefully I wasn't in the way of that, but you can see we're, we're pretty close. I got it close on the bench. And so, we'll go ahead and get our first key in place. Like so, this is going to be the tricky part. Oh, not too bad at all. to do is shorten that inside key just a little bit. I'm going to go over to the band saw and cut about a quarter inch off that. Alright, so we've got that shortened up by about a quarter of an inch. Alright buddy, let's try this again. There we go going to be real good. Okay, so the way this works is this is supposed to free float. And the idea is 
if it gets in the bind, you're not going to tear up the hydraulic pump. It's going to break right in here. So, you know, if you ever get stuck working on something like that, you got to bear those those things in mind. Uh, they're, they're made this way for a reason. Um, so anyway, let me get a wrench to fit these hydraulic fittings and uh, we can get this together and be done. Always a good idea to remember what hoses uh, went where with hydraulics because it will make a difference. You guys will get used to running these in a way if you reverse them they can tear stuff up. Uh, but this one is pretty easy, short hose, short hose to the longer fitting, long hose to the shorter fitting because it needs to cover more distance. And eighteens. the hoses are positioned to where they're not going to bind or rub on anything that they're not supposed to. There you go guys, a Schuler MS750 uh, feed wagon coupler repair. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you found uh, value in this for maybe you learned something or, or at the bare minimum it was good entertainment please don't be afraid to hit that like button. Y'all have a great rest of the weekend, and we'll catch you down the road.